everyone, it's Rivka and Happy New Year! So today we're going to be doing the January monthly spread, first one of this year, and hopefully this year I will be much better at doing these videos. What you're seeing right now is my brand new cover for this New Year's planner. This is the Happy Planner and I did make this cover. If you're interested in a DIY for it, let me know. So jumping right in, this is the January month and as you see I pre-planned by putting um, flags and sticky notes on it so that I know what goes where and I'm gonna start with doing the washi so these silver washies right here came in a Christmas tube I believe a year ago um, from Michaels and this gold toned one that says Happy New Year as I'm showing you right here and I'm gonna peel that up so you can actually see it um, that also came from Michael's. It came in the holiday box. So what I'm going to start with is the bottom and right now I'm going to move some of these post-it notes so that I can actually put down the washi and not have to go on top of them. But I am going to keep them in the box so that I know what goes where. Alright, so the bottom I'm going to put the wood grained. It's like a silver wood grain. I don't know how well you can see it on this camera. Um, again, it, it is from Michaels from a couple years ago. And right now what I'm trying to do is decide which way I want the grain to face. And because it is um, silver foiled, it has that white backings to it, so it was easy for me to do. Uh, I'm going to peel that off and just lay it out. And I am going to do this, um, speed it up a little bit so that you can, you don't have to sit there through all of the washi. Um, one note that I will say about this washi is that because it's, I'm going to say a clear-ish background, um, well, first of all, you can see through it. So if you have anything underneath it, you, um, you're going to see it. So either white it out or be okay with it, which you'll see in a little bit. I actually use that to my advantage, but it is kind of difficult to line up with the edge because you can't really see where the edge of the washi is. So I'm using my thumb at the bottom, if you can see, to just going to say kind of feel it and make sure that there's no overhang or sticky or anything like that. And then I just lay it down and readjust a couple times because I didn't quite get it perfect, which is fine. And why I love washi because you can readjust as needed. And I'm using a six inch metal wool ruler, sorry. Um, and I'm just using that to tear the washi. It's one of my preferred um, ways of doing it because it's only one tool on my table and I can use it for multiple purposes. Um, I do use it upside down because it's easier to tear against the metal instead of having the buffer of the cork. So yeah, I'm just going to keep laying this down, and I believe this time I actually got it a little bit easier. Practice makes perfect. I did have to peel it up, but every every time you do it, you get a little bit better at it. And I don't use this kind of washi very often. Okay, so I'm just going to keep laying this washi down. And one thing about washi, especially this kind, which is a little bit more delicate um, and rolls a lot easier, is once you peel it up, it the side of it curls, so putting it down straight up against the edge was a little bit more difficult, um, which is why I try to get it down right the first time, but part of crafts is you don't get it right the first time, you just keep going, and it ends up really, really nice. Okay, so I'm going to put this away. I'm going to roll it up because if you don't, it totally unravels and I don't want to leave that on my desk. It ends up um, going everywhere and I have a couple other rolls that I'm going to be using that are like this, so I don't want to just leave it be. And you just saw that little bit at the end there. I use a different piece of washi tape from a different kind of tape usually. It works better to... Um, keep it from unraveling. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to prep a top there for the next washi 
and I didn't want these colors to pop through. It didn't really go with what I was going for for this spread. So I'm just using white out to cover them up. Um, sometimes washi will cover it. This washi is similar to the one at the bottom with the wood grain, so it really won't. And I'm not just going to cover everything in white because it's only small bits and I don't want to waste the extra white out. And even though color will show through, the white out, since it's all white, doesn't really show through. The texture doesn't come through the washi very much, so it's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do as many of the dots in this as I possibly can. And then I, what I actually end up doing, because I don't have another whiteout, like a whiteout pen or liquid to be able to do more specific, I am going to use a white jelly roller that I have. And it doesn't work as well, but again, you don't see the texture as much through the washi. Um, if I was just trying to white something out, this might not be the best way to do it, but it's good enough to cover the color so that I can use the washi. And if you just color over it, it doesn't, it, I'm going to say fades it, but it doesn't make it white. So if you can see, I do a bunch of dotting because that leaves more ink on the page and makes it more white. Um, in a little bit, I think in a few seconds actually, my head, I mean you can probably see a bit of my hair popping up um, right there actually. And that's because I was trying to see around the details of the little letters in the word Saturday. And so my head kept going over and into frame. I'm still working on keeping my head out of the frame, but keeping my work in the frame. It is something that I'm working on. So there I jumped because it was a little too much. And I'm just going to keep going. So now I'm going to lay down the top washi. And the one I'm using is, again, it's a silver foil on like a clear. And this one is stars or star-like shapes. So it is a thin one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it straight over the words because you can see them through. So I was okay with that. It's like just a little bit of decoration and it doesn't detract from the words too much. I am going to lay it down three times on top of each other and that's so that even though it's a thin washi, I can cover all of it and not have an issue. The whole thing is nice and pretty. I'm just going to do that. I'm trying to line it up so that the stars, it, I don't think you can really see it. Um, you can see my head. Um, sorry about that, but there was no getting around it when I was trying to be that detailed. And the top of the big star is kind of cut off and it's at the bottom of the washi tape. So I'm just laying um, the bottom of the washi tape up against the star so that those little let's say, spikes line up and everything matches nice. And what I'm doing now is just using my finger to really push the washi down. It's not really necessary, but with this washi, if I wanted the black to really pop through, the more I rubbed it down and made sure it was as down as it possibly could, the more I could see the black through. And it is a little distracting and a little covering, but it works and it's pretty and exactly what I wanted. So again, I just moved those post-it notes, staying in the same box, but out of the way of this next washi. It's again silver foiled, has that white backing, and came from that recollections kit. This one is um, just like little white dots on silver, kind of like snowfall. And I'm just pushing it down. Where you put washi down on top of like holes, it's really good idea to keep it as... I like to push it down so that no air bubbles get in it and especially with the silver foiled one where it's mostly the silver foil I need to do that more often or better and I didn't like how that edge just cut with the ruler so I used the straight knife and pulled it off no big deal what I'm going to do next is actually cut off the edges with a scissor because there was overhang of the washi and it made it difficult it like sticks to the mat and it just makes it more complicated to lay down more washi if you've got this much overhang um, and I didn't want to have to deal with it and I needed to cut it off anyway so 
getting it done earlier is not such a bad thing. I just take my scissors and run it, it along the edges using the edge as a guide, which especially with the, I'm going to say calendar, the front calendar page, this one, it is a thicker cardstock, so it's much easier than even the paper of the other side of this month. It's just going to go all the way down, and on this edge it is a little bit more difficult because of the cutouts, but just take it slow and it will, won't be a problem. And again, I'm just trying to make sure I have gotten rid of all of the air bubbles in the silver foiling. It tends to need that a couple times, so I just play with it until it decides to behave. Okay, so now I'm going to just lay out this next washi, which is silver foil, as that is the theme of this spread, and it has white snowflakes on it. So it's just a, I'm going to say there's no specialties to how I'm laying this one out, it's just laying it against the edge, and then cutting it off at the washi um, edges. I will do want to point out that what I was talking about earlier with the washi unrolling and unraveling, it's happening in the corner right there with the three that I'm having to use again on this side. I'm glad I rolled up the wood one because I didn't have to use it again for the spread and this way it's out of my way and one less to unravel, but because I was reusing these again, I did have to, or I decided to leave them undone so I didn't have to keep uh, rolling and re-rolling them. And one thing I do want to say, I am laying out the washi over the whiteout right now. And it worked, but if you have to peel it back up, the washi, after it's already been on the whiteout, it will peel up the whiteout. So either, if you do that, put down a little bit more wash, um, sorry, a little bit more whiteout where the washi took the whiteout off, and that way you don't have anything peeking through. I did have one small spot. It's not a big deal. You can't really see it very well. Right now you can kind of see it because it was on this one right now. I just did it. Um, and you can kind of see it through the washi. It's not a big deal, so I'm not going to worry about it or redo it. But if it's something bigger, you might want to put down more white out or something along those lines. And I'm just doing the same steps again, as I said. And, you know, you get to see my hair. I don't know why it stands up like that. It's a little weird. It's just, like, a few pieces that stand up and just enough to keep going into frame. It's awesome. All right. Um, I hope that everybody else is having a great new year. So far, I'm posting this, I believe, on January 3rd. So it'll be a couple days. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I do want to make one another note when I have a little extra time right now. I um, I'm sure that my voice is coming off a little raspy, and you can probably hear me swallowing a bit. That's because my throat is sore, and there's not much I can do about it. So I do apologize, and hopefully by the time I make um, not this next video because I'm f filming that again today. But the one after that, um, hopefully my throat will be better and you won't have to deal with that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to apologize for that. And I'm just going to cut off all the washi edges this time. I don't know why this time I waited. Maybe it wasn't bothering me or getting in my way the same way it did last time. But you'll see that I am having a little bit more difficulty cutting around the edges just because the paper keeps flopping because it's paper and not the cardstock. And I'm just going all the way around and having to remove it. You can see my um, washi bits in the corner. I just do that because it's easier than throwing them away each time because I stick to my finger and stuff like that. And sometimes I've been able to reuse stuff from the washi corner. Um, so yeah. And... Let's see, what do I do next? I think the next thing that I'm going to be doing is putting down the items that go in each box, you know, for each day. And, well, apparently I <laughs> needed to get rid of some air bubbles and make things pop up. Oh, actually what I'm going to be doing is putting a sticker over the notes section. That little 
um, circle because it does the color doesn't really go. So I'm going to use this Me and My Big Ideas sticker book. They have really great stickers for covering that notes circle. Um, because all these circles, these round cir um, stickers, they work perfectly to cover it. I thought I was going to use the BU sticker that I just showed you, but I decided on Dream It and Do It. I figured it was a really great sticker for this month since my plans are basically to um, put into action a lot of the things that I've been thinking about doing and trying to make happen. So I'm going to make this month happen. And then what I'm using this washi for is actually not like washi decoration so much, but more of a sticker. I wanted to put something notating the new year, even though it does say it on this calendar. I wanted something a little bit more of a pop. So I used this, I cut it down so that it just said the new year and I'm putting it in the corner just like I would a sticker. And again, because I was trying to see where I was laying it, you get to see my what looks like very messy hair, but I promise it really wasn't if you were looking at me straight on. All right. The next thing I'm going to put down is a flag sticker. My fiance loves to fly the flag on flag days, so I went through my calendar marking down every flag day with those red, white, and blue, I'm going to say page flags. And if the reason wasn't already written on the calendar, like New Year's was, um, I put down... I put down why we're doing the flag day, you know, why it's a day to fl fly the flag. And then I put down these stickers so that it's easy to see. Um, if there's other things on the day, then I try to put those down first so that I can um, position the flag to not totally take up the entire box. And this day that I'm working on right now was a no school day for my son. So I wanted to put that in a box, so I laid that out first. And these stickers that I'm using right now are um, just clip art that I put on sticker paper and cut out with a straight edge. And then I just use that, and I write on these score boxes. So I'm going to be doing that throughout the different days, and I'm going to be using a couple different boxes um, because I didn't have enough of just the one kind, so it just gave a little bit more variety to the spread. And I am still figuring out my lighting and was using natural light um, on this day, and I didn't realize that it had adjusted itself, <laughs> which is why there are those lights, and you can kind of see that the trees are blowing outside based on the shadows. Um, if it washes it out, I am sorry, and I am working on getting better lighting and a more stable filming position because occasionally, I think right now, you can even kind of see it shake, and that's because it's not as the most sturdy, but I'm working on it, and hopefully this year, one of those dreams I can get done is the better filming setup. So it is taking me a little bit to write these out, and the reason is because since the stickers were a darker color, I wanted the black to pop, so I'm basically writing it over two or three times to make it really stand out. And each time I'm marking the box with what kind of event it is, so that I can just like glance at it, and if I want to see a school event, I just go to those stickers. So I'm going to go through those and write them out, and most of the items I do have on here are school um, related. Um, that's what I know in, in advance based on the school stuff, but I also have a birthday that I'm going to be marking down in a second, and I figured since I had a bunch of school events, I would try to keep as many of the school events with the same type of sticker. And I'm just using the blue ones off this page. It's a multicolored page. Each one's different. There's like two of each color. And when I ran out of blue, I decided to go to these ones. The These ones um, have like a glitter looking um, border. It's That's the design, the decoration. And they're from Exo Mama Plans, one of her $2 Tuesdays that I was able to purchase from. And I used a blue one for the school event because that's um, 
the color I used for the other school events, even though they're each different color, pur- um, blue, not purple. Um, and then I used a red one because of the um, stickers on that page. The red one was the one that was the best for um, my mom, who's that, and that's her birthday. So I wanted it to be more about her than coloring, and it stands out. But you probably just saw that I put a school sticker down on her birthday one. I'm going to correct that in a minute because I hadn't realized I was just putting the school stickers while it was in my hand down on all of them or as many that were on that sticker page. And um, I just didn't realize. So right there I realized and thankfully I was able to peel it up. Um, These stickers um, peel up pretty well um, when you like just put them down after you leave them for a little bit or if you really rub them down they don't move but for now they move just enough to save me of my mistake and right now I'm writing as small as I could can because there is actually three school things to put down for the day and I didn't want to have to put down a box for each because I don't think that would have fit um and it was all school related so it was fine for it to go on the same sticker and I just made a dotted border in between each one to differentiate them and I'm writing really teeny which is not great um right there in that corner was a little difficult um so yeah it is a gel pen that I'm using not just a regular black gel pen actually that I had gotten from my last job um it's a paycom one so they were the payroll company I worked with and they brought me this and a couple other cool actually stationary supplies which made me really happy <laughs> so yeah just a random note there and more school events I think that's actually um what I have marked throughout my calendar the most um at the beginning of the school year I put down stickers for all of them and then you know it's I'm able to write it in as I actually decorate each month. Um, And I'm doing the dotted line again. I don't know how well you can see it. I really do apologize for the lighting. It's not my best, but um, I will get it better. If you have any suggestions, I am open to those. So please leave those in the comments. All right, so I'm just going to write this out. And then I'm going to write out that it's my mother's birthday. And I do, I use her name. I use everybody's names. It's just better and easier, and anyone who's looking at my calendar can know. And the sticker I chose was a little balloon for her birthday. That page came out of a little, I'm going to say, wallet set from Recollections. And they're just cute little icons that I'm able to use. All right, so I think that's going to be just about it. That's everything I had for my spread. And here you can see the full thing when I'm done adjusting it and trying to get it all neat and frame. I hope you guys did enjoy this and that you will join me for future Plan With Me's, including the weekly one that I'm going to have posted later today. Please subscribe for more, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!